Hi, I'm Jeff Freed. I'm a Global Market Manager for DWK. DWK stands for Duran Wheaton Kimball. And if you're not familiar with DWK, we supply primary packaging components to the in vitro diagnostic, pharmaceutical, and biotech industries. Packaging drug products is a very complex process and there are several considerations that need to be taken into an account. An example would be the material composition of the actual packaging component. You need to ensure the material composition of the packaging component is compatible with the drug product and the two do not interact with one another. Also, you need to ensure that the primary packaging components are completely sterile so there's no adverse reactions from the end drug product to the end patient. What DWK is really good at is matching drug products with one of our primary packaging components. We make sure that the two are compatible with one another and there's no interaction between the drug product and the primary packaging component. We can also offer these products ready to use, meaning that they go through particulate cleaning, depyrogenation, and sterilization. So you can receive the actual products, put them on your fill line, and fill with your end drug product. What this allows is our customers to really focus on what they do best, and that's developing and manufacturing drug products. Now in this poster presentation, I took the most common material composition utilized to package drug products, which is glass, and I put it through a series of tests to test for the elemental extractables that can come from different types of glass. I did this by utilizing an analytical technique known as ICP OES, which stands for Ionic Coupling Plasma Optical Emission Spectroscopy, and this analytical technique will provide you with the inorganic elements that can actually come out of glass under specific conditions. Now before I actually get into the experiment we did and the results from the experiment, I want to go over a brief inner surface chemistry of glass. Glass is mainly comprised of silicon dioxide. When silicon dioxide is in its pure form, it forms these very regular shaped six bonded tetrahedral structures. This is known as a crystalline structure. The melting point of such structure is over 3,000 degrees Fahrenheit, so it's very hard to fabricate glassware at such high temperatures. Therefore, there's added network formers and network modifiers that either lower the melting point of glass or make glass more durable. Now, when you start adding these molecules on, one, on top of one another, you go from a crystalline structure to an amorphous structure. With an amorphous structure, you constantly have the shifting of bonds and atoms in the entirety of the molecule. When this occurs, you have to take into account that there could be elements that can extract out under specific conditions into the end drug product. Now what I want to do is provide you with the different molecules that are put into glass in the raw materials that they come from and also explain why they are put into glass. As I mentioned earlier, silicon dioxide is the most common material that's put into glass. The raw material, it comes from sand. You also have aluminum oxide, which comes from feldspar. That's put into glass to actually increase its durability. Then you have sodium and potassium oxide, which comes from soda ash. Soda ash is put into type 3 glass, which is known as soda lime glass, and it's put in to actually lower the melting point of the glass. Then you have calcium and magnesium oxide, which comes from limestone. This helps the um, bonds become more intact and uniform throughout the entirety of the actual molecule. You have boric oxide, which comes from borax. That's put into type 1 glass, known as borosilicate glass to actually lower the thermal coefficient of expansion. Then you have several different transitional metals such as iron oxide or zinc oxide and that's put into glass to change clear glass to amber glass. It's very important that you work with a packaging vendor that know what e exact molecules are put into the glass and that are able to fabricate the glass with high quality so you don't have to worry about the elements that are in these molecules extracting out. So, what we did with this experiment is we took glass vials in containers, specifically 30 milliliter vial glass in molded containers, and we put 20 milliliters of ultra purified water with a pH of 8 in each one. We autoclaved it at 121 degrees Celsius 
for 60 minutes. Then we took an aliquot of each one and then put it through the ICP OES testing. I have the results shown here and this is in parts per million. I have the elements we tested for on the left hand side of the screen. You can see we have sodium, magnesium, aluminum, potassium, calcium, iron, zinc, baryon, silicon, and titanium. Now what we did is compared it through two different types of glass, which are type 1 glass and type 3 glass. Type 1 glass is known as borosilicate glass. This has your highest hydrolytic resistance, meaning it's less likely to interact with the drug product. Therefore, type 1 glass can be utilized for parental applications. Type 3 glass, which is known as soda lime glass, has your lowest hydrolytic resistance and it's more likely to interact with the end drug product. The three elements I want to point out here are sodium, calcium, and silicon. You can see there's much higher amounts in type 3 glass than type 1 glass. And again, that's due to the fact that you're going to have uh, more interaction with the drug product with type 3 glass than type 1 glass. That's why you do not want to utilize type 3 for parental applications. This takes me to my summary, which we just created at DWK, which is the DWK rule of thumb when it comes to packaging drug products into glass. If you have a drug product that has a pH of eight or less, it's advantageous to utilize a tubular vial. If you have a drug product that has a pH of 10 and less, it's advantageous to utilize a molded vial. And if you have a pH of over 10, you do not want to utilize glass due to the increased chances of silicon dissolution, but either utilize a specialty glass or a different material composition. In summary, it's critical that you work with packaging vendors that have this type of analytical results on their primary packaging components so you can ensure your drug product is going to be safe and there's going to be no interaction with the pharmaceutical or uh, in vitro diagnostic drug product and the primary packaging components. If you have any other questions on glass or primary packaging, please feel free to reach out to me. Again, my name is Jeff Reed and my email will be on the bottom of the screen. Thank you very much.